Hello, Maverick Traders. Welcome back to your currency recap for March 11th. Some good, important, exciting things to discuss here today. As always, we're going to start with broader markets and take a top down approach, talk about what's happening in the markets, and boy, are there some moves in crypto. Litecoin explosive, Bitcoin and Ethereum, not as explosive, but still explosive. We're going to touch on that. We're going to highlight some crypto. Uh, ideas, some Forex setups, which currencies have the most opportunity. Let's jump into it. Disclaimer. This video was created for professional Forex and crypto traders. Maverick Currencies is a proprietary trading firm that employs professional traders around the world. Our traders trade firm capital and keep 70 to 80% of profits they generate. All trades and analysis in this video are for professional traders only. If you are interested in becoming a professional Forex and currency trader for Maverick, click the apply button in the video description. Let's break down what happened today. So the news of the day, crypto exploding higher, the more speculative coins like Litecoin up by more than 20%. We're going to look at some of those charts. Gold breakout continues. Gold is at a nice new all-time high. And equities have paused. Equities had a big reversal last week, a big bearish engulfing, and maybe moving more towards a risk-off environment. Now, as we look at currencies, the British pound down a little bit today, but really quiet day in currencies. And I still think the British pound and euro and some of those look better than most. Crypto was the standout performer and certainly the only one that was really newsworthy today. Equities, these other markets, really flat on the day. But you can see crypto as a broad asset class up 7%. Litecoin up 20 But Bitcoin, Ethereum, they were all up about 5 So it was widespread. Obviously, Litecoin was the standout performer. As we look at equities, I think we've got to notch down a little bit the bullishness and last week is a little bit concerning when somebody asks me what are your favorite candlestick formations I'll usually reply I like to see either a really long shadowed candle signaling a reversal or an engulfing formation and what is an engulfing formation well it's right here in this case this is a bearish engulfing and what a bearish engulfing is the bearish candle completely engulfs the prior day's candle. It swallows it up. It's a big slap in the face reversal. We offset all of the gains and we basically seize control. And in this case, you can see a little follow through today with the downward move. I'd anticipate a little more and some follow through to continue. So my thought is the market's tired up here and we're going to go through a corrective phase. How deep that correction, we'll see, but I think that's what has begun. As we look at what's on tap, tomorrow morning, we've got CPI, and CPI has been a market mover. Of course, inflation is the big driver uh, for assets because this is where the Fed got it deeply wrong. They screwed up, and they've got to continue to see that inflation rate come down. At 3.1%, that's still above the Fed's target at 2. We've got a bond auction on Wednesday. We've got PPI and retail sales on Thursday. Empire State Manufacturing, uh, consumer sentiment on Friday. But the big one is CPI, and it's out bright and early tomorrow. So as we look at analysis here, this is the way I would look at where strength and weakness lies. Certainly all of crypto is in the strongest of areas. For me, I still think Bitcoin and Ethereum are the more obvious current cryptocurrencies. They're the ones that are a little bit more stable, a little bit more safe. Uh, Japanese yen has staged a nice reversal and is now in an uptrend for the first time in a long time. And then pound and euro still look better on the long-term charts. U.S. dollar has moved into more of a bearish phase. Uh, Kiwi continues to be an underperformer. CAD has fallen off a bit. Swiss franc has fallen off. But for me, I think U.S. dollar shorts seems more obvious. And I really like matching it up with Japanese yen on the long side. So start to look at dollar yen on the short side, that currency pair. And if we short USD yen, it's the best of both worlds. If U.S. dollar continues to weaken, 
and yen continues to strengthen. And that's what I would anticipate here over the next couple of weeks. All right, so let's come in and talk about possible trade ideas. The first one, the one we just discussed, dollar yen on the short side. What I'm looking for here is a small bounce in dollar yen. I would love to see a one or two day rally up underneath these broken moving averages, kind of push us up under 148. Shorting it against 148 looks like a very good risk to reward. So yeah, I'm expecting a bounce, but I think that bounce will be short lived. And really the pattern that would play out here is a sort of inverse cup and handle of sorts. We have kind of come down towards that lower end. Now we bounce slightly, and so it'd be the inverse cup and handle and the breakdown. So first things first, small bounce and shorting right against 148. In crypto land, the question of do we chase this, to me, of course, this is a breakout. And of course, it probably goes higher for a couple more days, but it would be probably very, very short lived. I'm talking this rally should continue for a couple of days, maybe a handful of days, but I think it's in the late stages. I think this is more a sign of exhaustion than exhilaration. And if we look at other cryptocurrencies, it's the same thing. We've broken out back here and I always compare this to a runner. Here's the start of the race. Here's the resting period, right? You're getting rested, well rested, eat a healthy meal. You're all stored up all that energy and then you take off as the gun goes off. And then you run the race for a while and you're exhausted, but you see the finish line. And so you sprint for the finish. And usually there's a big explosive move that happens at the tail end. And that's what crypto looks like to me. Now, if you have to do something over the next couple of days, it's a buy. If you're talking about the next couple of months, expect this to create an exhaustion high up here and then have a really deep, violent sell-off. When exactly will that materialize? I'm not sure. So again, I think we're in the late innings, but the late innings can be very fruitful. So if you're looking to do anything with crypto, it's more very very short term quick and 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 you know got you got to use stop losses and so on but you got to be quick in playing that to the upside and then i circle back to this chart is our basket chart of the euro versus the major currencies we've pulled back in price here again if you're looking for a buy the dip candidate i'd still like that euro chart versus a lot of other currencies. So keep euro more on the long side, keep British pound more on the long side for now. If we're looking for things to short, there's plenty of other candidates, Kiwi and, and US dollars now moved into more of a short. But on the long side, Japanese yen has re-emerged, but euro and pound remain stronger. So is this move in crypto more of a breakout, more of the start of the game, or is it more of the exhaustion in the ninth inning? I think it's more of the latter. So be a little bit careful, be a little bit cautious with crypto, continue to play it to the upside in the ultra short term, but a caution is warranted. For the rest of this week, We'll continue to send out recaps. Of course, we'll have the trading room this weekend. And remember that CPI that comes out bright and early tomorrow morning. That is going to be a U.S. dollar mover and probably move equities, etc. Hope you enjoyed this currency recap. Have a great week ahead. We'll see you next time. Goodbye, everyone. <music>